This is Morehole Studios, part 13, horror movie and staged events production at Morehole Studios, Gaumont British Animation, and other studios. The secret movie studio where the artists were the actors. And here is uh, where the pictures came from, from the Morehole Studio Index. Here's some contact information. This is the uh, fair use statement. So this is John Dillinger, bank robber, shot by FBI agent Melvin Purvis, 1903 to 1934, America's first public enemy. It's not a movie star. This is the actual John Dillinger. You can look him up. And here we see next to John is Melvin Purvis. This is the FBI agent who shot John Dillinger. J. Edgar Hoover first director of the FBI. Now none of these people are who they're supposed to be. As a matter of fact, all three of them are actors and these are staged events. And we'll see who they are in a minute and we looked at some of the photos of employees from Warhol Studios in England in parts 1 through 12. We looked at this picture already and we know that they made cartoons there, that's what they were publicly known for, but they also made horror films, other films, and they staged world events. You're not supposed to know who these people are, but here we saw earlier, this is Alex Oxley, who played Boris Karloff, who was Frankenstein's monster. This gentleman is Ted Percival, who played um, Jack Parsons. Jack Parsons did research on solid fuel, he was a rocket scientist and was friends with L. Ron Hubbard, did black magic, but he's not a rocket scientist, and I'll show you later who L. Ron Hubbard was. The gentleman with the arrow pointed at him is Todd Browning, who directed Dracula and Freaks. The man at the top right with the red arrow pointing at the man in the top left is Bill Hopper from Moorhole Studios, who's Dwight Fry. And he also played, um, he played Renfield in Dracula. He played Fritz in Frankenstein. Bottom left corner, you see Joan Crawford with Douglas Fairbanks. The yellow arrow points at Barry Clark, who played Douglas Fairbanks. And the bottom right is Pete Arthy, who you'll see who he is in a minute. So this is uh, John Dillinger on the left. This photo is taken probably around 15 years after his shooting, and can you find him in the Moorhall Studios photograph? There he is, Arthur Humberstone, aka John Dillinger. And uh, basic features are similar. He's aged out here, same shape face, hair, and um, you'll see supporting evidence in a few minutes. This is Bert Felstead the arrow pointing at him, and he doesn't belong in the same photograph with the uh, Arthur Humberstone, who played John Dillinger, because Bert Felstead played Melvin Purvis, and Melvin Purvis is the man who shot John Dillinger. Now, the, um, the photographic evidence on Melvin Purvis is going to be um, a lot better uh, to start. I only have a couple photos of um, Arthur Humberstone, and it's a pretty good resemblance here of the two of them. But the stuff on uh, Bert Stel Felstead as uh, Melvin Purvis is going to be stupendous. And uh, here's that original photo I showed you, and this is um, also another staged photo. It's all staged here, but here they're mugging for the camera and whatnot. And here Boris Karloff. Um, is examining a skull and these people are fighting over here and strangling Douglas Fairbanks but here's what's interesting see here Bert Felstead is looking down at Arthur Humberstone and Bert Felstead is Melvin Purvis Arthur Humberstone is John Dillinger and you can see um, the resemblance here and they have given Arthur Humberstone a prop which is a stick and he's holding it like a rifle there's no accident. They have told him to do this, and they have told uh, Ber Melvin Purvis, Bert Felstead, to look down on him. This is a staged photo. It's a time capsule of information in here, 
and this is for uh, people other than ourselves. We're not supposed to know this. Oh, by the way, that red arrow, that's Clyde Barrow from the Bonnie and Clyde shooting hoax. We'll see him in a little bit. A little bit of a dilemma. I, I just don't have enough time to follow up with it. When you look up Arthur Humberstone, this guy Bruce Humberstone shows up, and he's actually a dead ringer for John Dillinger as well. Actually looks better in some ways. And two possibilities. One, um, and Bruce Humberstone's in the film industry. Bruce Humberstone could be... Um, Arthur Humberstone could be the same person or it could be a relative like his brother. Uh, I'm convinced that Arthur Humberstone is the one who played Dillinger because he's at Moorhall Studios and because I have all the other cast of the shooting, uh, Bruce Humberstone could, however, be him or his brother. Again, the, the resemblance is too remarkable in the name and whatnot. So we're going to look at some great pictures now of Melvin Purvis, who's Bert Felstead. And uh, here's Pete Banks, Bert Felstead, picture from Warhol Studios. And you can see the resemblance here. He's got some natural curly hair. I'm going to blow it up and invert it for a second just so we can get a better, better look. And uh, this is this photo. And again, you can see the shape of the head, the hair coloring. Even though it's black and white, you get a sense of a reddish hue to it. They've slicked it uh, down here. The ear, even though this is a different ear, here you have a left ear that's possibly a right ear. They look fairly similar. The nose is key here. The chin, he's aged here. It's 10, 15 years later, but this is the same man. And realize, I didn't go through a million images to find this. I did this through research. I looked at more whole studios. I went looking for these people, and I found them. So here's another photograph of uh, Bert Felstead, again, this time with Chick Henderson. And you notice the resemblance there. And here we see that the famous G-man Melvin Purvis did an ad for a car. And I don't think um, you'd have FBI agents doing ads for cars. This is a hoax. And it's all public relations. And they used them to make some money in 1936. But he is Bert Felstead, who worked at Moorhole Studios. This guy named David Hand, who plays Dillinger's um, attorney. And here's some more pictures. Pete Banks with Bert Felstead. And there's um, Melvin Purvis on the right. And um, again, remarkable resemblance. He's aged here, realized a nice grim face, but this is the same man. And uh, Roseanne Purvis is Melvin Purvis's wife. Here's Melvin Purvis. The FBI agent who killed John Dillinger, and we have to go look for Roseanne Purvis because she should be at Moorhall Studios, and sure enough, we find her over here. Same, uh, same woman, same quality of hair, shape of face, it looks a little more rounded here. Has to do with lens distortion. They may have built up a little prosthesis over here, but you can see in the quality of the eyes and the face, a little deer in the headlights look about her that uh, this is the same person. And again, here's Boris Karloff. Here's director Robert uh, Siedemak and his brother Kurt showed up last episode. This is terrific. If you have any doubts that the Dillinger shooting was a hoax, this should resolve it. This uh, is a classic photograph. This is John Dillinger. Here's his attorney. And this is Lillian Holly, the sheriff. And here Dillinger's gotten out, and the attorney must have gotten him out, and he's smirking at the sheriff, and he's resting on his shoulders as any good client would rest on their attorney's shoulders. And it's all a staged hoax. It's nonsense. This never happened. These are all actors, and they're largely German and European actors from uh, silent films and later on films, and I'll show you who they are. So this is Eric von Stroheim. Go look him up. Very famous Austrian director and actor. You can see resemblance. Um, yeah, he may be a little older here. It's a little past the silent film era. Ernst Lubitsch, again, German director and actor. You see the resemblance between the two. And this is a woman named Asta Nielsen, who was a great silent film 
actress. She was supposedly Danish, and she made 74 films. 70 of them were made in Germany. She played Lillian Holly, the female sheriff. So I have uh, identified four of the people in here. Arthur Humberstone, who plays uh, John Dillinger, Ernst Lubitsch, Eric von Stralheim, and Asta Nielsen here. Now, if I had more time, I could look up silent film stars, go to the Wikipedia, which is I, what I did to find uh, these guys, and look at all the silent films and start to pick them out. Uh, again, these three will definitely show up in my belief. This is another classic Dillinger photograph with his attorneys. I like to show the photo intact without me um, shaving it down, smaller, bigger, and writing things on them. But this is the original photograph. It's a classic. John Dillinger with his three attorneys looking grim and studying them and grimmer. He, he breaks uh, character a little bit and... But uh, this guy's the showstopper. If you have any doubts that this uh, whole Dillinger thing was staged, this will lay it to rest because this is a world-famous director. Do you know who he is? He turns out to be D.W. Griffith. This is D.W. Griffith, the man who directed Birth of a Nation. And there's no mistaking him. None. This is the same man. They put no makeup on him. Same kind of, you know, easy, relaxed look about him sitting here. And uh, this is David Hand. I'll show you in a minute. But he breaks character for whatever reason. He breaks into a small smile. He's supposed to look grim. Everybody else looks kind of grim. I just think um, he's having too good a time sitting at the table with D.W. Griffith. And here we see a guy lighting John Dillinger's um, cigarette. And um, I'm going to identify him. This is also one of Dillinger's attorneys. I'll show you who he is in a second. So here's the guy lighting Dillinger's cigarette. He was at Moorhole Studios, named Stan Parasol. Here, you know, they made cartoons, so they show him doing a cartoon figure, and he's got a little bit of a mirror here, so a little bit of a smile. He's using himself for this bunny rabbit, but here he is lighting John Dillinger's cigarette, and that's Stan Parasol. And here we have another guy in the photograph, and uh, we went through Moorhole Studios pictures, and we dig up this guy named Eric Wylam, animator and trainer, with Rekka McGibbon, an in-betweener, whatever an in-betweener is. And um, here you see, this is the same man, same resemblance. They look like they aged him up a little bit, maybe they put a prosthetic on him, whatever. Um, but, or maybe this is just his natural face, because they really look uh, very, very similar. 